Uh, so starting starting with with the first question. Okay, the question is that uh, uh, why is N two so unreactive? And the answer to that is that it's got a it's got a strong it's got a very strong triple bond. And has high bond energy, and it's non-polar as well. It gets very hard to break the bond. Plus, it's it's non-polar. It doesn't really attract other other molecules very strongly. Here, uh, after that, you've got uh, you've got uh, magnesium and lithium, both form nitrides with the uh, N two. Uh, yeah, other clearly paper concept. This is a uh, uh, March nineteen question paper two two. As I write an equation for the reaction of magnesium with N two to form magnesium nitride, so it's Mg plus N two. And together they're going to form a magnesium nitride. Mg is plus two, N is minus three, so the formula is going to be uh, Mg three N two. T K one plus two, and this is minus three, so it's going to be Mg three N two, and there's going to be three Mg. Uh, write down the states as well. This is going to be a solid. This is going to be a gas, and ionic compounds are solids at RTP. State one observation you would make during this reaction. Uh, He's saying solid lithium nitride reacts with water according to the following equation. So one observation. Now, the observation is clearly given. It's, uh, it's got a solid. And on the other side, on the product side, everything is an aqueous, is an aqueous state. That means, that means the one observation would be that the solid, the solid dissolves. I mean, that's, that's probably the only thing that you would be able to uh, that you would be able to see which is the solid simply dissolves i uh, said so then uh i so said then you've got uh, another one which is state one industrial importance of ammonia so what is the industrial importance of ammonia you just have to check your notes it's all of it's it's uh it's uh, fertilizers he can mainly used for making fertilizers because uh, fertilizers are normally ammonium salts. They contain, um, I mean, a lot of them have ammonium ions in them. And then one method of producing NH3 is by heating ammonium chloride uh, uh, with calcium oxide. Explain why this reaction produces ammonia. Uh, it produces ammonia because, uh, because calcium oxide is a base, first thing. TK is, is a base. Eight second of time. And uh, just one second. I said that's a base. Because, because it accepts uh, it accepts H plus one ions, and you can see that uh, the oxygen over here uh, is the O minus two ion. Specifically, the O minus two ion over here is accepting it's accepting H plus one ions. It's letting go of the calcium ions, and it's accepting H uh, plus one ions. Ions they act as, a, as an acid because it loses H plus one ions. So you can see over here that you have an NH4 plus one ion, or on the other side, the H plus one is lost. Happy Jackin, it has turned into ammonia. So explain what the reaction produces ammonia because this, this acts as a base. It accepts H plus one ions and the other one uh, loses H plus one ions. TK. You clear it, E part. You get this is about, I mean, this is about Brosted Lowry acid base theory. So you get so there's this clear. Let's go, where did it? Two mark and I'll just quickly check what the what the exact 
wording for that is see you got a question I think we are March 19 to it's March 19. Uh, he's using the same word. It displaces. He's saying CO displaces NH3. Uh, so the wording is CO displaces NH3 from it. Uh, from its order. Uh, the second mark is a stronger base, more basic uh, than NH3. I believe it's... Uh, I mean, this answer over here would be... kind of mean exactly the same thing. That CO is doing that. CO is acting as a base. It accepts H plus lines. What you could have written is that it accepts H plus lines from NH4 plus one. So that is kind of the kind of displacement that it displaces NH3. And uh, the NH4 plus one is acting as an asset. So the second mark was for, for stating that it's a base. And the base displaces NH4 plus one. So this is exactly what it's doing. So I think this answer would be considered correct. I mean, the wording is different, but it kind of means exactly the same thing. As so the next one is you've got an oxidation number of N. That's uh, this one is uh, plus two because O is minus two. And over here, O is minus two again. So N would be plus four. And NO2 can be formed by different chemical reactions, right? Equations for the formation of NO2 by, uh, that's easy, N2. Plus O2 is going to form 2NO2. And then the thermal decomposition of magnesium nitrate. So whenever you have a group 2 nitrate, it's going to decompose. It's going to form a metal oxide. It's going to form uh, 2NO2 gas molecules and it's going to produce half O2. So this is going to be a solid. This is an ionic solid. This one is a gas and this one is also, also a gas. Then you've got molecules of N2O can be formed by the reaction between N2 and O2. The bond between N and O atoms is a coordinate bond. Uh, the enthalpy change for the reaction is 82. So, so you know what the enthalpy change is. It's, uh, I mean, for this entire reaction, the enthalpy change is already given to you. It's, uh, it's plus 82. So that is already... Right, it calculates the bond enthalpy of the uh, in kilojoules per mole of the NO bond. So, I said this one. So, so what happens is, uh, calculate the bond enthalpy in kilojoules, and uh, you have to figure out all of them are gas, so you can use bond energies. What is how do you figure out enthalpy change using bond energies? The formula is you figure out the bonds that are broken, all of that would be endothermic, and you uh, minus bond formed. Bond formation is an exothermic process. As it's an exothermic process. So, so uh, you open the data booklet and you figure out uh, how many bonds are formed. The first thing is you have to you have to count the bonds that are getting formed and broken as well. So the bonds that are broken are the two N triple bonds that are being broken. That is one. Second. And then there's an oxygen double bond oxygen that's being broken in the O2 molecule. So that is, that is one of them. And minus bonds formed. How many bonds are getting formed? You're forming two N triple bond ends. And 
Uh, there is one NO data bond, and that is what you're looking for. There are actually two NO data bonds. So two NO data bonds are also being being formed. And the overall, if you sum up all of this, the overall thing must come out to be equal to plus 82 because they've already told you what the enthalpy of the reaction of this reaction is. So it should come out to be plus 82. Bonds broken, minus bonds formed. Make sure you count them properly. Uh, the N triple bond N would probably get cancelled out. So you're left with one O double bond O that is, I think, 496. So that is plus 496. And minus 2 times N double bond O. And that's equal to plus 82. So you're going to try and solve this. It's going to be 496 minus 82 is equal to 2 times uh, the NO bond energy. And you're going to divide the whole thing by. The next thing is you're going to divide the whole thing by 2. So it's going to be calculated. What do you get for this? Two hundred seven. You get two zero seven R. Okay, let's uh, quickly check. Okay, is it two? It is two zero seven kilojoules per per mole. Okay, just remember bonds broken minus bonds formed. And remember this formula only works. It only works if uh, all of them are gaseous. If any one of them had been a solid, you can't use bond energies because bond energies are only defined for, they're only defined for uh, gaseous molecules, not for solids. Asha, here's another one that is saying that uh, NOCl is a reactive gas that is sometimes formed when NO reacts with Cl2. So there's this gas. NOCl is a strong electrophile and readily undergoes an addition reaction with alkenes. So it's an electrophilic addition reaction for alkenes. Complete the diagram to show the mechanism. Now, you did not do any reaction um, I mean, using this. No reactions. You've, you've not studied any reactions. But you have studied electrophilic addition. So the only thing you're going to do over here is you're going to compare it with, uh, with the reactions of alkenes. So where's the, just a second. So if you look at the electrophilic addition reactions, I'm going to just draw this on this. The pi electron cloud is attracted to the, to the positive uh, charge over here. And the negative chlorine and the electrons over here are going to get repelled. So they're going to get repelled. So that's that's your first step. Uh, he's saying include all NC charges, lone phase, and curly arrows, and the structure of the organic intermediate as well. So that is kind of the first step. Uh, this is this is basically what's what's happening in the reaction. So the first step is uh, the positive atom gets attracted to the double bond, and the negative one gets repelled further, repelled by the by the double bond electrons over here. So that's the first step. An intermediate would be formed. So the intermediate would be that this positive end will go and bond with one of the carbon atoms. So this positive end, along with the double bond O, is going to go and attach itself to one of the carbon atoms. The other one would become a carbocation. And in the next step, the Cl that has broken away and has turned into a Cl minus one ion, that will come in and that will get attracted to the other carbon atom. So this mechanism you hadn't done, but you have done electrophilic addition. You know what, what happens during electrophilic addition, that one of the atom first gets attracted to the double bond, goes and bonds with it, and then the other group comes in and attaches to the to the carbocation. TK, is this clear?
ഒരു <laughs> this one i guess so it has all these all these definitions about uh, what a mole is i mean you got you got to be asked these terms so so for example uh, uh, the relative formula mass is defined as the mass of one mole of compared to uh, 1/12th the mass of carbon 12 so all these definitions the relative isotopic mass the relative atomic mass uh, what is a mole so uh i mean these are two basics so they're probably not going to come but there are other definitions as well just a second a lot of hess law definitions um the standard enthalpy change of reaction of formation what is the definition ionization energy definitions so all those that's all given over here in this one sheet so i'm, I'm going to share this with you uh but coming back to the question where is the question whenever you have the term relative relative is it's the average mass so it's the average mass of uh, of a molecule compared to 1/12 the mass of a carbon 12 of a carbon 12 isotope so everything is measured with respect to with respect to carbon 12 like how much are you heavier compared to carbon 12 or how much you're lighter the reason you use the whenever you have the term relative that means average because uh, because elements have a lot of isotopes uh, like chlorine over here has two isotopes which is why it's uh, it's formula mass is in decimals because you're calculating you're taking an average of the mass of the molecules uh suggest so why the boiling point of hcl is much higher than f2 so what's what's the reason why is why it's hcl having a higher boiling point compared to f2 kya hoga which you could you repeat that please new why is why is hcl having a higher boiling point compared to compared to fluorine like what what intermolecular for remember boiling points in molecules Maybe because uh, hcl is more electronegative yes so it has it has permanent dipoles right yeah and and the other one you get the other one only has van der waals forces and the other statement that you're going to write is that the permanent dipoles are stronger compared to the stronger compared to van der waals forces so that that is going to be the the other mark so ये तो पिछला वाला था ठीक है इसी अलग स्पर्मन डायपोज़ ये तो वन हैज बैंडवॉल्स फोर्सेस एंड द कंपैरेटिव स्ट्रेंथ यू गोइंग टू स्टेट दैट दिस वन दिस वन इस स्ट्रॉंगर एक्सप्लेन बाय अच्छा व्हाई इस सीएफ टू हैविंग अ वेरी हाई बॉलिंग पॉइंट इट हैज अ वेरी हाई बॉलिंग पॉइंट व्हाट व You know, what type of ionic ionic penicillin it's an ionic compound so the reason why cf2 has high ionic uh, so high boiling points is that it's not a molecule it's a giant ionic lattice it's got positive and negative ions all attracted to 
each other. So there's going to be a lot of positive ions and a lot of negative ions, and they would all be strongly attracted to each other. So you would have to break a lot of ionic bonds. So the first mark would probably be for, for it being a giant ionic lattice. And many strong ionic bonds are present in that ionic lattice. So there is there is going to be strong attraction, uh, which is why which is why uh, it would require a lot of energy. So you could have, you could also comment on the energy of this. So so strong ionic bonds. I mean, this, it's going to be the same thing: strong electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. So we did write giant. It's a giant ionic lattice with strong ionic bonds between them, which means the same thing. Now, CF2 can be made by the reaction of calcium carbonate with hydrofluoric acid, right? An equation for the reaction. So hydrofluoric acid is kind of going to be the same as uh, hydrochloric acid. So he has said that calcium carbonate reacts with hydrofluoric acid. And he's also told us that calcium fluoride aqueous can be made using this way. So calcium fluoride aqueous can be made from this. What are the other two things that are going to be formed? Kyoga, what's the what's the other two things that are formed? H2. Whenever you have a carbonate plus acid reaction, what do you get? I mean H2. A carbon dioxide. H2. See that. So it's going to give you carbon dioxide and it's also going to give you it's also going to give you H2. And complete the electronic configuration for chloride ion. So uh, 17 electrons, but it's minus one. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p6. So that's that's a total of that's a total of 18 electrons. Uh, when Cl2 is passed over hot iron, FeCl3 is formed. Uh, when I2 is passed over hot iron, the following reaction occurs. State what you observed during the reaction between Fe and I2. Explain why Fe is formed rather than Fe I3. First thing, observation. State what you would observe during the, it's a two mark question, so it's probably just one mark for observation. So give one observation. What is the color of iodine? Brown. Yeah, what's blue, the, black, blue, black, that's called it. Okay, so that's, uh, anyway, it's a gas. A ga iodine gas is purple. No, it's purple. Okay. Yes. I mean, iodine has many colors. Iodine as a solid is blue black. Uh, if it's if it's aqueous, then it's like uh, yellowish brown. And. Uh, when it's a gas, like over here, it's a gas, it's a purple gas, purple vapor. Okay, so that is what iodine is. Purple color would disappear. Purple vapor would, would disappear. I said now over here, when Cl2 is passed, when Cl2 is passed, he's saying that Fe Cl3 is formed, right? Uh, not plus, but the question stated when Cl2 is passed, FeCl3 is uh, formed. But when it's when iodine is passed over hot iron, you get only FeCl2. What does that What does that indicate? How are Cl2 and I2 behaving? I mean, like the iron because of Cl2 changing. Cl doesn't like to lose bonds. Sorry, this next one is I2, actually, one second. Is this first thing? Uh, so, in the first one, when they passed Cl2, it turned into FeCl3. When they passed I2, it turned, the same iron turned into FeI2. So, Fe became plus two, 
over there it became plus three. So it's 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 a redox reaction happening. So how is this behaving? Is it behaving as an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Oxidizing. It's behaving as an oxidizing agent. It's oxidizing the Fe. So first thing, both both uh, Cl two and I two uh, behave as oxidizing. I mean, they both behave as oxidizing agents because they like to gain electrons. So Fe would be the one that would be gaining uh, losing electrons. Um, so they will try to gain electrons. They will try to get reduced. But who's a more powerful um, oxidizing agent? Who really likes to gain electrons? Smaller, smaller molecules, smaller atoms, or bigger atoms? Bigger. No, bigger. The bigger atoms. You have notes for that. In notes, man, if you remember group seventeen, we said that uh, down the group, the oxidizing ability decreases. Can't pay a second. So down the group. I said down the group, us my group 17 may this part. Elements ki jump. So elect they become they become weaker oxidizing agents when you move down the group. Uh, the top one really likes to gain electrons, and the bottom one doesn't really like to gain electrons because the nucleus is very shielded. Uh nucleus case get pellets of 53 electrons, and they're already 53 electrons, so it would be very hard for iodine's nucleus to gain more electrons. So what is happening over here is, in this question, what is happening is that I2 is a bad oxidizing agent or a weaker oxidizing agent. So if he doesn't, iodine doesn't really like to gain electrons. So if he would not be losing that many electrons. So iodine is a weaker, you be clear about? Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. I said, so it's a it's a weaker oxidizing oxidizing agent. Fe two is soluble. Uh, sir, uh -huh. in the previous question you wrote a uh, purple vapor would disappear. Shouldn't you like? Shouldn't you write like formed or something? It would disappear because you had purple vapor, and then it's turning into Fe two, which is an ionic compound. So it's probably, um, I mean, Fe two is is not even a vapor. You use oh, okay. a, a pose, so the I2 would be gone, right? Yeah. As the next one, Fe I2 is soluble in water, student carries out a chemical test to confirm the presence of Fe I2 contains aqueous iodides. The student adds a single reagent in a precipitate forms. I don't know the reagent the student uses, state the color of the precipitate that forms. So, so student carries out a chemical test to confirm that a solution of contains uh so i minus one ka test can so uh what do you do you add serenitrate yeah that's the standard test for halide ions and the color of precipitate it's going to be a it's going to be a yellow precipitate and compounds containing i minus one are often contaminated by bromide ions identify a further reagent that the student would use to show the precipitate formed contained iodide ions. It's this precipitate that is formed, which is uh, which is of silver iodide. It's going to be insoluble in ammonia. So add ammonia, concentrate it, and the precipitate will not dissolve. So like if you go through your uh, inorganic notes, uh, the test for halide ions was the first thing is you add silver ions or silver nitrate. Once the precipitate forms, uh, then it doesn't really dissolve in. I mean, the first one, Cl minus one dissolves. In H3, Br minus one does not dissolve in H3. It dissolves in concentrated H3. And I minus one is not soluble at all in any type of H3. So can you send the sheet in the group? Okay. 
Für mich ist das so. Oh, uh, sir, uh, we'll have class at this time from now. Which one? Will we have class at this time from now on, or will you change? Hi, hey, can you say better? It's my authority than you. You have your own authority. Yeah. So just one second. Just a second. I said this one. Uh, HF is the only known molecule that contains. Uh, one second. So HF is the only known molecule that contains elements of. Uh, so draw a dot and cross diagram to represent the bonding in a molecule of HF. H forms a single bond. O forms two bond. F forms a single bond. So you just have to draw the dot and cross diagram. So it's an. It's an O in the middle with an F on one side and an H on the other side and single bonds. And O has, it's a, it's group six, so it's going to be um, four electrons remaining out of the six. So out of the six, uh, four electrons will be remaining. The next one is HF can be made with a reaction of F2 with ice at minus 40. The reaction is similar to the uh, reaction of Cl2 with cold water. Suggest an equation for the reaction of F2 with ice. Again, it's uh, it's inorganic, which is uh, HCl and HOCl would be formed. Uh, uh, this reaction would be given somewhere over here. Okay, Cl2 with water forms HCl and HClO. So, and he's specifically saying that it's a, it's a similar reaction. So, uh, so F2 with ice, F2 with water, ice is water. So it's going to form HF and it's going to form HOF. They've already given us one of the products. HOF is an unstable compound uh, and decomposes to form HF and O2. Draw a fully labeled reaction pathway diagram on the axis to show the decomposition of Evo O levels well, it's minus it's an exothermic reaction. So you'll have your reactants. The reactants in this case are HF. And then you'll have your products. The products would be at a lower energy, and uh, the product is HF plus half O2. And you're going to label everything. Enthalpy change is this one, delta H. It always starts from here, the arrow starts from here and reaches to, to the products. That's your delta H, that's uh, minus 139. And there's going to be activation energy as well, which is the energy that is needed at the start of the reaction, that's Ea. Pirke, pure HF is a colorless liquid, contains HF molecules that have strong hydrogen bonds. Draw a fully labeled to diagram to show. You have to show hydrogen bonds. Now, HF is a highly polar molecule. And one of the reasons that it's very polar is that it's got lots of lone pairs as well. So there's going to be another HF molecule, which is going to be highly polar. And the F is going to have lone pairs. So, so the lone pairs of one F will be attracted to the positive H of the, of the other molecule. And that's going to be your that is going to be your hydrogen bond. And remember, hydrogen bonds is usually just one hydrogen bond that is formed between molecules. So you have to show the lone pair and that lone pair gets attracted to the positive H on the other side. Uh, so then, I said, then you've got, uh, you've got uh, interhalogen compounds, BRCl, IF5, contain two or more different halogen atoms that are covalently bonded. D is, uh, so uh, I think he's asking for the MR and he's asking for the general gas equation, which is PV is equal to, PV is equal to NRT moles. Moles is mass divided by MR. So you can, you can write N as mass divided by MR. NRT, the pressure is given. So it's, uh, it's 101. 
three to five pascals. The volume is also given that's in decimeter cube, but it's got to be in meter cube. This is something you have to remember. How do you convert decimeter cube into meter cube? You divide by thousand. So that is P into V. Uh, and the mass is given, that's 4.13 divided by the EMR, which we don't know what the EMR is. And R is 8.31. And the temperature is given as zero degrees centigrade, but that should be in Kelvins. So remember, volume must be in meter cube. Temperature must be in Kelvins. Pressure must be in Pascals. So zero degrees centigrade is how many Kelvins? It's how do you convert centigrade to Kelvins? You add two seventy-three. Okay, so two seventy-three. So what what MR do we get for this? Did anyone calculate Kiara? Sitra, did you have you tried this? Oswa? Muneeb sign. What will be the compound? Is MR hum likhenge se? Ni MR to ye bhi calculate karoge na? Oh, okay. Usse kaha hai ki D hai kuch. We don't know what D is. It contains. We don't know what D is. Bas usse kaha hai ki ye hai uski properties ke. It's zero degrees centigrade. Pitna pressure. This is the volume and this is the mass. And use the general gas equation. Uh, sir. Yes. I think it's ninety-two point five. Okay, you're getting 92.5. So the next question would be, yeah. use your answer to determine the molecular formula now. So he said that it's chlorine and it's something chlorine plus fluorine, right? But the CLX fluorine Y, okay? It's, I mean, that's the, that's the compound. It's a combination of chlorine and fluorines and you know it's 92.5. So the next part is, so Sky, if you are unable to calculate. So we were able to calculate, so we're going to ignore this. Uh, so figure out okay, what what could be this compound. Remember, CN is 35.5 and fluorine, I think, is 19. So what combinations of each could give you 92.5? So you could just find 35.5 and 19 and then just divide 92.5 by that. No, you can't do that because uh, you, you, don't, do that? you don't know whether it's one ratio one. So we're going to try combinations now. Uh, I said one thing, I'm, I'm one, one hint. I mean, either you can try combinations. Like you can have one CL and let's say uh, three fluorines. Let's try three fluorines. What's 19 into three? 57 plus uh, 35.5, uh, so three, three fluorines. One CL and three fluorines. That gives you 92.5, But you would have to, you would have to sort of try, do some trial and error. That's one way of doing that. Uh, clear, the, the other way is, how did I know that there was going to be one CL? Um, the reason for that is fluorine cannot expand its octet. Like you can have one CL forming three bonds with fluorine. And one CL is also capable of forming uh, bonds with seven fluorines. Like let me, let me just check if there is a molecule that exists which is CL. F7, I think there is. 
so no, that's chlorine trifluoride and chlorine. So ClF7 exists. Uh, so ClF7 is a compound. So that kind of shows that uh, Cl is capable of bonding with. It's capable of bonding so it's with. So ClF7 doesn't exist. Then you say, Yeah, yeah. New. He's saying, why does ClF7 exist? But IF7 doesn't. Yeah, you read the first line. It says ClF7 doesn't exist because chlorine is a smaller atom as compared to IF7. That's a certain. That's a more probably signal of the Q. Yeah. What is this a linear? Uh, so ClF5 probably does exist. Yeah, it does. One second. Uh, chlorine pentafluoride. Yeah, that's that's a molecule. So so five of them. So the question is, and you might get this question. I mean, that was actually uh, the the previous one, the previous thing that we googled, IF seven thing. That was actually a question that came in the paper as well. So the question is, why did I go for one CL? And uh, I mean, there could have been other combinations as well, where there could have been two CLs. Why was I sure that there was always going to be just one CL because a CL can, is capable of making multiple bonds. Fluorine is not capable of doing that. Uh, how did we know that fluorine only makes one bond? And why does CL make more than one bond? Remember the reason is fluorine cannot expand, expand its octet. Fluorine is seven electrons, right? So it's got two shells. The first shell has two electrons. The second shell has five electrons, right? Not, not five, seven electrons. Yes, sir. So its second shell has room for how many electrons? Just one, right? Yes. So that means it's if it were to gain electrons or if it were to form covalent bonds, it's only capable of forming just one bond because uh, there's only room for just one single electron. But in the case of chlorine, chlorine has 17 electrons. So it's uh, it's two, eight, and seven. So how many electrons can the third shell accommodate? Eighteen. Eighteen, right? So that means it's capable of accommodating a lot more electrons because it's a bigger shell. So remember, uh, atoms that are in the third shell, or atoms that are in the fourth shell, they're capable of making many, many bonds because they've got bigger shells. They can accommodate more electrons. The second shell, uh, the whole octet rule is basically limited to the second shell because that's where uh, you, you can just accommodate a very limited number of electrons. So chlorine is capable of gaining four electrons from other atoms or five electrons or three electrons because it's got a much bigger shell. It has seven electrons but it can have a maximum of 18 electrons. So it, it, it is capable of octet expansion. I mean, the term that is often used is octet expansion. So it's got, it's got, it's got lots of empty orbitals in the third shell. TK, is this point clear? Yes, sir. And this question will come back to the question. I mean, you get this question a lot of time, like, they will state it in this way that you have NCL3. They can phosphorus Joanna, that's capable of forming PCL3 as well as PCL5. So why is that? Because N is in period two. N's electronic configuration is two and five. So in the second shell, it can only gain three electrons, that's it. But phosphorus on the other hand is in the same group and its electronic configuration is kind of the same, it's two, eight, five. But the third shell is capable of gaining a lot of electrons. Uh, it can accommodate a total of 18 electrons. So it's capable of forming even more bonds because of the availability of low-lying empty orbitals in the third shell. Clear about Yes, sir. So this question go. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, time we can do another question. I have to leave. If they're in five minutes. Chalo, theek hai, theek hai. Okay, sir. Allah Hafiz. So, time is very restricted. Hmm? Sir, we can go to the next day. Okay, okay, okay. Chalo, theek hai. Allah Hafiz. Allah Hafiz.